Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, the Arkansas Times, and KUAR-FM 89. Hello again, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us. More cases, more hospitalizations, more deaths. An 11-year-old girl died Monday, her family said, after contracting COVID-19. And as the surge continues unabated, state legislatures, legislators met in special session to consider changing the ban on mask mandates for schools, specifically those with children too young to get the vaccine. Two proposed bills that would have allowed those changes failed. Joining us now via Skype, Governor Asa Hutchinson. Your, uh, Governor, thanks very much, as always, for giving us your time. As we are taping this broadcast at mid-morning, uh, the General Assembly just minutes ago adjourned, uh, and where does that leave you? Well, of course, the uh, legislature did adjourn. I called them into session for two specific purposes, uh, one to address the authority to opt out of the federal program for extra unemployment benefits. Uh, they approve that. Uh, and then secondly, I asked them to uh, support flexibility for our local schools for those uh, young people under 12 who can't get vaccinated so they can be protected. And uh, they declined to act on that. And I want to applaud uh, Representative Mayberry who really fought hard uh, other legislators wanted to see something done, but it was blocked in committee. And it's very disappointing that they left uh, within, uh, what, three days and went home without any action. It's, uh, we have to remind ourselves that we are in an emergency. An emergency uh, demands emergency action. And, uh, and approaching these issues uh, seriously. And so I am disappointed. Uh, we still have a couple weeks before school starts. We're going to have to take additional steps to protect those young people, uh, looking at options. And, of course, we're awaiting uh, the court decision on the constitutionality of the law that bans school districts from uh, taking those protective measures. So we've got a little bit more to play out here. Uh, but uh, we made the request to legislature. Uh, they rejected that. Even as we speak, uh, Governor, at mid-morning again, uh, circuit judge in Little Rock is hearing arguments. Uh, uh, plaintiffs have, are seeking a temporary restraining order to permit some of the things that you are seeking and that health authorities are seeking. We don't know, obviously, the outcome of that, but if that TRO is not granted, what are your options that you discuss? What is on the table? Well, then at that point, the current law is still in place, which bans uh, uh, mask mandates or anything of that nature, including vaccines. Now, let me make it clear to your audience that uh, I don't intend to have a statewide mask mandate. I'm opposed to that. Uh, under these circumstances, uh, we don't have a uh, vaccine mandate. Those are individual choices that we have. And uh, so I'm just concerned about that vulnerable population that has no other choice than those that are under 12 that they're not eligible for the vaccine, has it been approved for them. And so that's what, and we, and we need school and they're required to be there. So we're gonna have to really push hard on uh, vaccinations as a whole. The best answer is that everyone around that child be vaccinated that provides them the greatest level of protection I know that the litigation will continue on uh, for uh, the school districts to have more flexibility. Uh, but in the meantime, it is just really focusing on the vaccines that we want to continue to try to push out. That's the way out of this uh, entire pandemic and for our children to be safe in school. Cool. Yeah, well, your administration will not seek uh, uh, mandatory vaccinations uh, and, and mandatory masking, obviously, is still uh, a prohibited absent uh, legal action. But you spoke, sir, of other options that are under consideration. Can you share those? Well, I mean, I outlined one. I mean, the option is looking at other means to keep the children safe. And so they're not necessarily legislative options or legal options. They're practical options of working very hard uh, through my conversations in the communities, uh, through we hope to have uh, really a, a, an initiative within the Department of Education uh, to market the vaccinations among 
uh, those that are in high school that haven't been vaccinated yet to really increase that. So those are the health care options that we're looking at. Uh, we'll see if there's any other steps that should be taken after the court decision. But uh, with the legislative prohibition uh, on any flexibility uh, with our under 12 children, we have no choice but to do everything around that to protect them and to keep that environment in the school safe. Uh, if there need more resources, we're going to put that there. Uh, spacing will be an issue, uh, ventilation, obviously. Uh, and also, it's, it's still a choice among the parents to have, have the children uh, wear a mask, but those are parental choices, and I expect that uh, will not uh, really protect all of the 12 and under. Uh, a great many parents, sir, obviously are opposed to masks, but a great many are, are highly in favor of it and have spoken out. Are you concerned, sir, that we may see a fall off in enrollment in a couple of weeks? You know, that's actually a good point, that you see many private schools that are moving to a mask policy, particularly for the lower grades. And so, you know, the public school is not in a very good competitive position. Uh, they're not given the flexibility to do all they can to protect the health uh, of their students. And so, you know, there could be choices made. Yes, I think that some parents that feel strongly about uh, their, their child and uh, that they might be compromised health-wise if they go back to that classroom, uh, they could look for other options. So uh, that is an unfairness in our public school environment that they don't have that same flexibility that others do. And so our job is just to do everything we can to give that confidence, uh, to give as much, uh, many tools as possible to those younger kids. Uh, to, to broaden the question, sir, we've got uh, colleges and universities, uh, state supported uh, opening, and they say they're gonna do everything they can to ensure the safety of students, faculty, and staff. Uh, are you concerned there that as some health officials are, that whatever they do, we're going to see an explosion there, surge there? Well, it's likely, actually, that we're going to see uh, cases go up when school convenes again. We saw that last year, and we're certainly in just a serious, if not more serious, situation. Uh, the, so what's the answer to it for higher ed? Uh, many of them want more flexibility if they can impose a mask mandate. My response to that is everyone in that environment is eligible for a vaccine. Let's don't lose focus, and let's work more closely with getting vaccines out to protect that environment. And let's uh, try to avoid that mask uh, debate uh, in that higher education arena. Get everybody vaccinated, focus on that. You have expressed uh, regret publicly, sir, for having signed the legislation, the, the mask ban legislation, that you talked about the political imperatives at the time. Could you analyze this session in terms of what was compelling the General Assembly to just basically turn its back on, on uh, on efforts to amend that statute? Well, of course, you know, they boiled it down to a very simple message that uh, parents should have the choice. Well, which is, is uh, easy to say, and, it, and it's true. Uh, parents have the choice as to where they're gonna send their children. Uh, but whenever you're looking at the safety of the classroom, we've always had vaccination requirements. Uh, you know, when I went to school, it was smallpox, it was measles, and there's so many places you can't go uh, without showing that you uh, have been vaccinated. We can't vaccinate those younger people, uh, but, you know, so masking is a fair discussion, but they boil it down to a very simple argument that parents should have the choice, and, and you've got a lot of the public that responds to it. What's frustrating, though, is that legislators are responding simply to the number of emails they get rather than standing up and providing leadership. And that, uh, we're, we're losing our balance, uh, that it's the loudest noise that gets the response versus logic, compassion, common sense, and that's frustrating. Did the legislature fail the state, sir? Well, you know, they all looked at representing the uh, their constituents, and you can't, put them in a, paint them with a broad brush because there were many members that were trying to stand up and do the right thing, but the majority uh, said, no, we're not gonna do anything, and doing nothing is not a good option in an emergency. Sir, the, uh, on the matter of the supplemental uh, jobless aid, you and the General Assembly were in accord on that. Uh, is this something that you'll look back on in 
in two months or so and say, I wish I had opposed that. Wish I'd taken a different position on that. No, I don't think so. Uh, I, I mean, of course, I have been consistent that uh, whenever that option came up, uh, we opted out of it under my leadership because employers are looking for uh, people to work. Uh, they are uh, desperate for workers, and we don't need to pay healthy people $300 extra a week uh, to stay at home. And so that's a logical decision. Also, down the road, uh, you know, if everything went the wrong direction, there's always the option to opt back in. So that can be turned back on. But we don't want to do that under this environment because we've got jobs that are available. Uh, people are desperate for uh, workers and they're paying good salaries. So let's put them back to work. Uh, so there's a there's a apparently a growing movement in in corporate big business in the United States uh, to mandate on the on the uh, part of employees some vendors and even some customers masking and in the case of corporations and employees vaccination. You approve of that? I approve of their right to do it. Absolutely, this is a free country, and and individual businesses can make the decision for the safety of their uh, workforce, uh, their customer base, and uh, and, and their business. And so, uh, absolutely, that's, uh, that's called individual liberty and freedom. And uh, so, uh, while I think businesses should be careful because, uh, you know, there are consequences to that and they need the workers, but when you're looking at the healthcare environment or you're looking at poultry processing plants that were hit early in this uh, contagion with uh, the virus, uh, it's reasonable for those businesses to make that decision, and they have the right to do that, and the law shouldn't prohibit them from doing that. Governor Hutchinson, thank you, sir, as always, for your time. Great to be with you, Steve. Come back soon, and we'll be right back. We're back and with a bit of news following the uh, interview with uh, Governor Hutchinson, a circuit judge at Little Rock granted a temporary restraining order banning enforcement of the legislature's ban on uh, local governments uh, and masking orders. Joining us now, the mayor of Little Rock, the Honorable Frank Scott. Your Honor, thanks very much for joining us. You had filed suit seeking, uh, uh, you and among others, had, uh, had sought this injunction. So at least you have some temporary relief. Well, thank you so much. It's truly a pleasure to be with you. Uh, we understood uh, for quite some time and really looking through the research uh, with our city attorney uh, that when we issued our executive order to mandate masks in public spaces, uh, that it was perfectly legal and that the state legislature's prohibition against uh, municipalities and local school boards was unconstitutional. Uh, and so we took the time to research the law before we made uh, the executive order yesterday. Uh, we had to do it in the best interest of public safety, health, and welfare of our Little Rock resident. And we understood that our police power in helping our residents with public safety, health, and welfare uh, could not be taken away. Well, it was legal, Your Honor, because it was not specifically illegal. Uh, I, I think it's fair to say, but uh, surely this is not the end of it in terms of litigation. Are you confident and the city legal staff that you can prevail in the long run? Yes, sir. We're very confident. Our city attorney uh, took time. We've been looking at it uh, since the prohibition went into effect on July 27th. Uh, and so we wanted to make sure when we made our move, uh, that it was a legal move and all our I's were dotted and T's were crossed. Uh, and so we are very comfortable uh, and positive that we will continue to prevail. From a practical matter, though, uh, Your Honor, this is a tough one to enforce. You're, you're running against public opinion that in, in some quarters is quite hostile to a mandatory, to masking period, let alone a, a governmentally mandated mask. How are you going to make this stick? Well, we make it stick by focusing on the three E's, which is to educate, uh, to engage, and to enforce. Uh, we don't ever want to get to the part of enforcement uh, where you're arresting someone for this. Uh, we believe, particularly, we're going to always um, run things on city hall and, and city property that are owned and operated by the, the residents of Little Rock and owned and operated by the city of Little Rock government. Uh, and so that's what uh, public spaces mean. And we strongly encourage businesses to follow. I want to take this time to share appreciation to businesses that are already leading the way here in Little Rock uh, by uh, creating their own enforcement within their private business. 
We're even seeing large companies like Tyson and Walmart doing the same. Uh, so we really see a lot of our co our companies in Little Rock uh, leading the way uh, for the private spaces and will lead the way in the public space. Well, in terms of enforcement, though, uh, Your Honor, I think you know that that's going to be the, the, uh, one of the arguments that's used against this, that you, City Hall, you're going to be arresting people left and right for not wearing masks, fueling the opposition to this thing. Well, this is not the first time that we've issued a mask mandate. Uh, we did this last year, some 17 months ago, uh, and it worked very well. Um, the more, more or less, the, the residents of Little Rock understand the need, the rationale to protect ourselves, to stop the tran transmission of COVID-19, and we believe in our residents. Again, we've done this once before, uh, and when we got to a point where we felt we needed to pull back, we did. Uh, so now we're in the middle of third third surge, and so that's the reason why we're doing it again and fully believe in the residents of Little Rock. Well, uh, sir, in terms of educating the public and, and stressing, emphasizing the need for vaccination, how are you going to do it that we have not already done that? Well, we've already been educating the public about the need to get the vaccine. Uh, the city of Little Rock has led in partnership with a number of different hospitals and pharmacists uh, a number of different uh, get the vaccine clinics. Uh, actually, this past weekend, I was at three, uh, and we'll continue to do that. And uh, you're seeing right now in Pulaski County, Pulaski County leads the way in our large counties uh, with the number of vaccinated people. Uh, anyway, we're at close to 50 percent, uh, which is good, but we want to be closer to 70 percent. Uh, and so we're excited about that. I think what people have to understand, Little Rock is the mecca of health care. Uh, there are individuals that are traveling two and three hours uh, to Little Rock to receive health care. And also, we are the largest city in the state. Uh, we're 200,000 on population, but from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., we're upwards of 300,000, so the size of a Nashville. And so those are the reasons why we have to lead the way and protect measures. And again, uh, this is not something we want to do. I fully know this is unpopular opinion, uh, but I'm going to always err on the right side of right to do best for the residents of Little Rock. Uh, I have to believe, Your Honor, that you have uh, had uh, intense conversations with the superintendent of, well, of all three school districts, but certainly Little Rock and uh, mm -hmm. public schools. Can you share the, na what, what have the nature of those conversations? We're all concerned about our children, which are our most precious assets, and what, what's going to happen as they're moving towards. Uh, but not only our children, because our children have parents and guardians. And so what we have to do is what are we going to do to really, truly protect uh, our residents, and so that I applaud LRSD and super, their school board as well as Superintendent Mike Poor, who issued uh, the lawsuit. I also want to applaud the Pulaski County Judge uh, as well as others uh, that have joined the lawsuit that went before Judge Tim Fox today. And grateful uh, that Judge Tim Fox uh, sided uh, with municipalities and, and local school boards because uh, local government have to have the opportunity to lead uh, her people. But is there going to be a greater court? And I'm not suggesting that there hasn't been coordination, but uh, are you going to step up the coordination between K-12 uh, in Little Rock and, and perhaps in the county as well and City Hall? We have a strong relationship here in Little Rock and Central Arkansas. Um, actually, quite frankly, all of the Pulaski County mayors uh, have been meeting throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, at one point, it was weekly and sometimes now monthly. Uh, we continue to meet, so myself and the other Pulaski County mayors, as well as I meet monthly with our local public CEOs that d does include uh, Little Rock School District. Uh, and so there's always intense uh, communication, collaboration, and coordination because uh, we all impact this, gr this grand city uh, that we call Little Rock. But one final question, sir, and it's the same question I put to Mr. Hutchinson a bit earlier. Has the Arkansas General Assembly, well, are you disappointed in the General Assembly? Plainly, you are. Did it fail? the people of Arkansas? Uh, that's for the, the people of Arkansas to decide. As a leader, uh, leaders have to act, and I can share uh, that uh, those leaders at the state capitol uh, did not act, and that's disappointing. All right. Mayor Frank Scott of Little Rock, thank you very much, sir, for being with us. Come back soon. Thank you so much, Steve. do appreciate you. And we'll be right back. Continuing on, as state and local governments wrangle with what they can and cannot do regarding mask mandates, vaccinations, and the like, businesses across Arkansas and the nation are taking matters into their own hands. And joining us now, Randy Zook, President, CEO of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce. Mr. Zook, as always, thanks for coming aboard. First, let me just ask you your reaction to, uh, uh, to Judge uh, Fox's TRO this morning. 
Steve, I haven't had a chance to look at the wording in it, but uh, you know, this is this is creating a lot of difficulties. So uh, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I don't I don't have a I actually don't have a reaction. I haven't read the the order. I've been on other calls uh, wrapping up the legislative session. Well, in terms, sir, though, of COVID response by corporate Arkansas and small business Arkansas, for that matter, there seem, well, as we said in the lead in there, they seem to be taking in growing numbers matters into their own hands. Or is that an accurate statement? I think that's I think that's accurate. I think the pressures of the Delta variant, the, the uh, alarming increases in uh, clinical cases and hospitalizations and in turn deaths has got businesses really uh, leaning in on how best to deal with this. It's the most difficult HR issue uh, that anybody in business has ever um, had to contend with. Uh, it, it strains uh, employer-employee relations at, at the least, and it, and you know, there's there's some there's some real angst involved in all this, and and, and people are literally scared to death in some cases, uh, but for the most part, uh, uh, companies are finding a way to persuade their employees to go ahead, most of their employees, uh, to go ahead and get the vaccination. A lot of incentives, a lot of encouragement, a lot of paid time off, a lot of assurances, a lot of doctors coming into businesses to put people at ease. Everybody's doing all they can to to uh, get as many people as possible vaccinated. Randy, you used the term, Mr. Zook, you used the term a second ago, encourage. In some cases, they are doing more than simply encouraging. They're making it mandatory, are they not? Is that appropriate, and do you expect to see that continue? In some cases, they are they are having to resort to um, uh, mandates, to to instructions, either or kind of decisions. Uh, United Airlines, I guess, is the most dramatic one uh, in the last few days. They've got a, a period of time for that to occur. Walmart, Tyson, others have have taken steps in that direction uh, to varying degrees. But let me let me just reassure people that. None of these companies wants to part company with good employees. Um, every one of these companies offers reasonable accommodation for certainly for any health conditions that, that prevent someone from accepting a vaccination and also for any uh, strongly held religious conviction. Those, those, are, those are straightforward, uh, no exceptions kind of uh, uh, conditions and people are HR people are working daily to uh, put people at ease in those regard in regard to those two issues and and uh, but the, again the last thing these employers want to do is part company with good people they, they, we are we are short people already uh, but at the end of the day there comes a time uh, eventually in some cases and this is a judgment companies make that we just have to comply with the, the recommendation and get the shots taken in order to protect our customers uh, as well as fellow employees. Yeah, we have talked in terms uh, thus far, sir, of, of employee staffing, but what would you expect to see uh, additional Arkansas businesses impose a, at least a mask, a mask requirement on their customers and their vendors? You know, I've, I've heard all kinds of variations on the theme. Uh, some places say, look, if you if you can bring in proof of vaccination uh, and you're fully vaccinated as the term is used, uh, then feel free to go around the office or the plant or the business without a mask on. As long as you're not fully vaccinated, you're required, you may be required to, to wear the mask and maybe even test weekly. Uh, people are doing, you know, going to pretty uh, uh, extreme measures to to accommodate people's um, uh, concerns about the vaccine, and and uh, but you, you find all sorts of variations. On, on the staffing matter, sir, uh, General Assembly on Friday morning uh, adjourned sine die, having approved Mr. Hutchinson's legislation uh, or uh, endorsed Mr. Hutchinson's uh, refusal on the supplemental. Uh, job aid at the almost yeah, yeah almost the same time Washington issues an absolutely stunning uh, uh, jobs report uh, in terms of uh, of uh, employment prison those two sir and what what do you see 
I think one follows the other. If you, when we discontinued the supplemental federal benefit for unemployment and extended the time periods beyond the state levels, then people are rational. People react to economic incentives. As long as people were receiving more than they were making on the job from those two sources, the state and federal benefits, then many of them chose rationally not to go back to work. As soon as the extra $300 a week ended, many are choosing to go back to work. Your, your biggest increase in that number this morning was in leisure and hospitality, and that's where uh, that's where the, the greatest reluctance has, has been uh, falling in terms of, of reemployment. So you're right. It was just shy of a million new jobs from the last report. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see next month's report be equally stunning. Uh, people are going back to work. And I have to end it there, Mr. Zook, because uh, we're simply out of time. Randy Zook of the State Chamber, thanks, thanks. very much for being with us. Appreciate it, Steve. Come thank back you. soon. And as always, we thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Support for Arkansas Week provided by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. The Arkansas Times and KUAR-FM 89.